Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 24th and we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, California here, Pacific Ocean. Check out all the cold air flooding into the region here. You can see the cumuliform clouds approaching the coastline here. That is cold air and little cumulus clouds dealing with that cold air aloft. They're going to be rising up into that air coming across our region here and creating some convergent zone activity as this frontal system you can see is passing this morning. Brought some rainfall to much of the area today. Tuesday systems out here across the Gulf of Alaska too. It's going to bring some more precipitation across the region. This energy back here well west of the Aleutian Islands is going to dig out across the Gulf of Alaska. Big Aleutian low coming up in our future here and possible atmospheric river pointed at the Pacific Northwest as we go towards Thursday night into Friday. We'll take a look at that in some detail as well. Wind gusts around the area last night. We talked about this. Look at Bellingham, not bad. 43, 48 there at Smith Island, just off of Whidbey. You can see the Hood Canal Bridge, 45. Destruction Island, 46. Some pretty good wind gusts around the region here. The Saturna Island, 43 as well. So pretty good gusts going on there. Look at Whidbey Island itself, the Naval Station out there, 43 miles per hour. Didn't get that much of the Puget Sound. Did get some low 30s towards the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, but pretty typical for fall. You can see some stronger gusts down here. I think this was what Huckleberry Ridge 54. Look at Woodland clocking in at 45 there. So kind of hit and miss around the area. Many of the regions that even Astoria only got 33, but not bad. Hokoyam at 40 there. Now look at SeaTac yesterday, 55 below average again, just a trace, but that's going to change with that system going through this morning and this afternoon. And you can see the drop off from the 88 degrees a week ago. Look at the fall week. We've been talking about it for, you know, a couple of weeks now and it, we're in it now. So now taking a look here, this is thunderstorm potential. They didn't put anything out yet. Let me update this. No, they didn't update anything. Uh, nothing for the region today. They probably could have put something out for Western Washington, Northwest Oregon today. There is a thunder threat across the area today. Tomorrow they did pay attention and put it out for the Western areas. However, now looking at Spokane here, good graphic ahead. Um, a cooler active pattern, October 24th through 30th. Mainly the best snowfall above 3,000 feet in the higher terrain, temperatures below normal, some breezy conditions as the fronts pass. Look at Missoula, Montana. Again, best snowfall above three, 4,000 feet below average coming up here. But it's that time of year you can start building up that snowpack through the Rockies there off through uh, the east. Now, taking a look here, this is burn scars. Why are they a flood risk? You can see the trees, the litter, which is just what the trees drop. It's not human litter. Burning vegetation and litter can lead to ash and burnt topsoil, which just really repels water, just allows it to run right off. And then it runs off into other areas that don't have burn scars. And you just enhance the amount of water that area is getting. You can get landslides, you know, debris flows, all kinds of nasty stuff. So that's why a burn area is such a big concern. Now, taking a look here, this is the NAM3KM. We are looking at the composite reflectivity. There goes the frontal system this morning moving through. Then you can see the showers coming across. Possible convergence zone somewhere around Seattle, just north of Seattle, and maybe a couple others around the area as well, including up north towards Bellingham, maybe just near Anacortes and whatnot up here. And then they'll move off into the Cascades during the day. Um, take a look here. The NAM3KM, this is Cape coming into the area today. Look at some pretty good values coming through the Puget Sound here, even through southwest Washington, down towards northwest Oregon as well. So would not put it out of the question as far as getting a clap or two of thunder across the region. This is the HER. You can see the frontal system there. It's picking up, I think, these convergent zones a little bit better here. You can see that coming across north of Seattle here, off into the Cascades. Some interesting looking bands moving on to the coastlines, coming up through the Cascades, down towards Portland as well today. And then we'll go into the future a little more. Then you can see another vigorous frontal system coming through here tomorrow afternoon as well. A thunderstorm threat mainly west of Puget Sound and Willamette Valley, mainly along the coastline here as we go through tomorrow. Now take a look at this. This is the HER 3 cam significant tornado parameters. Just wanted to show you this. There is a little bit of that parameter activity going on here where you get this kind of measures um, instability. It measures low level helicity. And it's kind of put all into one parameter here. And it kind of shows a little bit of a signature across the Puget Sound. Wouldn't be shocked to see a report of a funnel cloud. And that could even include Southwest Washington down towards Oregon today as well. As you can kind of see it retreat off into the Cascades. And going through tomorrow, I wouldn't be shocked again tomorrow to hear of a 
you know, maybe even a water spout or a, a funnel cloud report here along the Oregon coast, maybe down through Southwest Washington as well. But it's like a needle on a haystack around here trying to predict what areas are going to get potential for a, a tornado or some kind of funnel cloud. And it's usually not that big of a threat for this area. Now look at here. This is the her lightning flash density potential. Go through this afternoon today and you can see a few bands of showers do have lightning potential and even up north of um, Everett and Marysville there towards Anacorta, south of Bellingham there. Looks like the her has been settling on a thunderstorm moving through that region there this evening. So let's see how good the her is. Going on in through tomorrow, you can see Again, lightning threat along mainly the coastlines here. And that's going to move from north to south as we go through the evening hours tomorrow. But check this out. Even tomorrow night here up across the Puget Sound, mainly north of Everett, maybe another thunderstorm will move through there as well. So we do have that potential here for the next couple of days. Looking at the European now here. This is for today. You can kind of see it bullseye in the Puget Sound there in the convergent zone activity. Look at that through the central Puget Sound here. I'll zoom way in on that here. And... Yeah, so that threat is here for the area today. It's not so gung-ho about the coastal areas tomorrow, but it does show that potential as well. Now we'll back up out of here again. This is the European yesterday's afternoon, yesterday afternoon's run. You can see the system coming through today, the cold air behind it, convergent zone activity behind that. Here goes Tuesday's frontal system. Again, thunderstorm potential, mainly coastal areas, bringing precipitation to the higher regions here of the Cascades. And you, the Rockies are seeing a bit here. You know, Boise's not necessarily getting that much. The higher terrain definitely going to get more precipitation out of these systems here. Then you see that deep Gulf of Alaska low really get going here. And you can see the atmospheric river pointed here at western BC and Vancouver Island. These are three-hour chunks here. So this is significant rainfall that could be falling on top of some snow that's built up here across western BC. You'll notice the sag across Washington kind of bounce back again above Vancouver Island. So we got to watch out here. This, this atmospheric river, although it is early season, could be a little bit of a problem here. Some pretty good precipitation amount showing up Saturday morning here for the Washington coast. Cascade sliding down through Oregon before that system finally dives down out of the area. And then another system rolls through here the following week as we stay in an active pattern all the way into early November. Now, taking a look here, precipitable water, you can see today's system kind of gently slides through, not a problem. It's progressive. Tuesday's slug of moisture slides through. But then as we get that Gulf of Alaska trough, it can hang up these atmospheric rivers. These are th it's not three-hour chunks yet. There we go. Now we're into three-hour chunks, kind of moving across the area. Doubles back across Vancouver Island. That's where you really got to watch the potential for flooding on these atmospheric rivers when they bounce around and come back over an area again. And then it kind of slides down the Oregon coast, then another system, but it's progressive after that. So we'll be watching that atmospheric river here coming up. Looks like it's going to start about on the day Thursday for Vancouver Island, then drop down towards Washington a little bit Friday, bounce around, come back down Saturday morning, western Washington, western Oregon, on and through the weekend. Now looking here, this is the European left, GFS right. Let's get the timing of these systems. There's today, tomorrow, good agreement. Here goes the Gulf of Alaska low. Great agreement through hour 81 here. Again, towards hour 100, a good agreement on that low pressure system across the Gulf of Alaska. This is at 18,000 feet, but you can see the strong gradient here that exists across western Washington and Vancouver Island here. The GFS a little bit further south of that feature here. These lobes continue to swing around the area as well. And then you can see in the extended, the European dropping a colder low down there. The GFS keeps a little further north, more zonal flow across the area here, tries to build a ridge at the very, uh, very extended 10-day period here. Uh, now looking here, we have ensemble mean of the European on the left, GFS on the right. This is an average of all 30 GFS members and all 50 European members here. Now as we go through there, we go Tuesdays and then we go the Gulf of Alaska trough here. Good model agreement here through hour 144, and that's when the 06Z ends. So pretty good agreement that we're going to have an atmospheric river pointed somewhere between western BC down towards Washington as we start this weekend, and then bouncing around anywhere between western BC and Oregon as we go through the weekend. So heads up there. This is Whistler kind of showing where they go above freezing here as that atmospheric river approaches here this weekend. 
and then the potential for it warming up even more before maybe some cooler air in the extended. Here's Stevens Pass. Look at this. You can see the warm air encroaching into the region, even going above 10,000 feet a couple times here, but staying generally above pass level and quite warm there at Stevens Pass. Probably going to ruin whatever snow falls here over the next couple of days before maybe some cooler air arrives through the extended. Here's Mount Hood, similar to Stevens Pass here, a temperature going up over 10,000 feet, actually freezing level over 10,000 feet, I should say. Now, <clears throat> taking a look here, this is Whidbey Island. <clears throat> We're looking at the extended forecast here. It's kind of bullseyeing in here on that frontal system coming through Thursday into Friday morning here. Picking up on some, uh, I don't want to say high winds, but this is starting to look a little bit interesting here. And I'll show you this. Look at Orcas Island here, kind of. The mean is up towards 50 miles per hour. This is something we got to watch here. Uh, look at Friday Harbor, similar, well into the 40s on the mean. Check out Skagit Regional, a little bit further off to the east, but still some good winds showing up here. The mean is over 40. Quileute, same thing. Bellingham, same thing. But as you look a little bit further off to the southeast for Boise, for example, no problems with wind there. SeaTac just maybe a little bit blustery going through that same time period, not a big deal. All the way down towards Klamath Falls, not a big deal. So this is kind of localized up towards northwest Washington, southwest BC. And this is why. So here goes this frontal system. This is for Thursday morning. You can see that atmospheric river draped across western BC and Vancouver Island. You can see it slide down towards western Washington. Some high winds coming through the Strait of Georgia here towards um, northwest Washington across Orcas Island, the San Juans, Bellingham, Whidbey Island, the coastal areas here. But not much for Seattle south, as you can see, or towards Portland or towards eastern Washington, Oregon are going to be shielded from any kind of wind during this event here as you can see there. Now this is total snow and it's going to go all the way through. This goes 248 hours out, 10 days out. And here, I'll start from the beginning. You can see some snow build up the next few days. And this is going to be a problem if we get good snowfall up here across some of the western portions of BC. There could be some flooding concerns with this next atmospheric river that comes through this weekend here and then starts to damage that snowpack and really adds to the runoff. And then maybe some snow like we saw on the end of the runs here show us going more towards a cooler pattern here as we go through early November. Now look at total precipitation in inches here. This is all the way out towards November 2nd here. And you can see the huge amounts dropped across the Vancouver Island area, all the way down really to the California border. And even at the end of the run here, California starts getting some precipitation as you get towards October 30th here, but that's a ways out there. But that would be very beneficial to California. But look at all the precip that comes. Let's run through it. For BC and the Washington Cascades here, and even down towards Seattle, getting up over an inch there now. And some of the Willamette Valley really getting blasted here as we go through October 30th here. And then as we go through Halloween, looks like maybe some precipitation will be falling across the Pacific Northwest as well. But you can see for the most part, areas like Boise not getting too much. Some of uh, eastern Washington's definitely going to be rain shadowed. But places like the higher terrain in eastern Oregon, northeast Oregon, will be getting some rainfall amounts as well. But southern Oregon, as usual, getting rain shadowed again. Now, taking a look, 6 to 10 day precipitation. This was yesterday. Have they updated today? No. But I, you can expect this. That above average signal is strong. 8 to 14 day again, all the way through early November. Strong signal there. So, yeah, you can see that cold air really rushing in today. Heads up, eyes on the sky. Watch those convergent zones. You see the clouds going dark. You might get a lightning strike across some of the Puget Sound today, down towards Portland even, maybe southwest Washington. And tomorrow, that's really going to include the entire coastline of Washington and Oregon as well. So keep your eye on the sky. Watch out for some funny-looking clouds today as we go through. Here's Tuesday's system. Then the next energy out here is going to really set up that Gulf of Alaska trough and point this atmospheric river at Vancouver Island or Western Washington, maybe even Oregon here through the weekend. So that's the next big thing we'll be watching here. Where is that atmospheric river going to set up? Confidence is increasing in that. So anyways, I go hope you guys are having a good day. hope you guys are enjoying this cool, crisp, rainy weather here. It's going to continue for a while. And um, yeah, so click like, subscribe, leave some comments, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.